On today's video, we're gonna be dissecting the minimalist index so you can better understand what's on your feet and the decisions you need to make to reduce your risk of injury. Thank you for joining me once again, Run Smarter Scholars. Today, we're going through the minimalist index, which is a formula designed by 42 experts, and it is designed to assign a percentage to every running shoe that's out there with 100% demonstrating more barefoot qualities and something that 0% on the scale would indicate maximal support. And this is useful for two reasons. One, it's useful when purchasing new running shoes. We need to know what sort of percentage that particular shoe is. And two, when you decide to transition shoes between two different types that are on different sides of the scale, we need to know how to transition. And so knowing the value of both of those shoes can be extremely helpful. In fact, that same paper that was formulated by those 42 experts, they concluded that it may help recreational runners to decrease their risk of injury because it reduces your risk of an inappropriate transition between shoes. So I first learned about this minimalist index through the website called The Running Clinic, and it has Blaise Duvois and Jay Fasculier, who I've been following for years. And on their website, they actually have a database which shows particular running shoe types and automatically shows where they are on the minimalist index, what percentage they have. But they also have a calculator for shoes that aren't on that database. And so you can plug in certain characteristics and follow a certain chart to calculate the shoe that you have where it falls on that minimalist index. But there are five particular categories for you to learn to better understand the minimalist index. So we're gonna dive into each one. We're gonna go through the website calculator and also how you can manually calculate these at home. So the first category we're gonna look at is flexibility of the shoe. In particular, the longitudinal flexibility and also the torsional flexibility. Now you can see here that there are certain uh, characteristics or certain levels of flexibility, and then you just rank the particular score. So if you can see this shoe I have here, my most minimalist shoe, if I was to do this longitudinal test, I can fold it up quite easily. So that would be a five. If we look at the torsion and I wring it like a towel, you can see that it easily folds, you know, quite easily. So we'd put that a five. In comparison to my sort of bulkier shoe, if I do longitudinal like that, would be classified as a one. But if I create that torsion, that also is probably a one on the scale. If we do this manually, uh, we would have to calculate both of those scores and then halve it. And if you want to know a bit more characteristics about what classifies a zero, a one, or a five, then I can just um, give you those that particular information. So I'll put that up on the screen now and you can pause it and check out those particular characteristics. So that is flexibility. Let's move on to number two. The second category is the weight of the shoe. Knowing mostly for minimalist shoes, they are quite light and more traditional shoes are a little bit bulkier and a little bit heavier, just on average, uh, but what you can do to calculate this at home, you can go to the website and just plug in the weight of the shoe in grams, or I've got to the side here. Uh, if you wanna do this at home without the calculator, this is how you would rank the weight of the shoe out of five. Category number three and category number four are looking at one, the stack height, and two, the heel drop in that particular shoe. And so your stack height will be the difference in distance between the ground and where the middle of your heel is. So that's sometimes 10 mil, can sometimes be north of like 20 mil, but the heel drop will be the difference between the stack height and also the height in the forefoot. So you can calculate those two by uh, either looking up on a website and looking up your particular brand and type of shoe. And it usually should just say what the stack height is and what the heel drop is, or you could just manually do it with calipers. If you decide to do that, you can just plug in those values. And when it comes to a calculator, you just type in those mils of the heel thickness and also the heel drop. Or if you want to do that manually, the values are seen here. And then we can move on to category number five. Lastly, we're looking at features, what we call motion control or stability technologies. And this website has six different technologies that we need to look at to see if it's included in your particular shoe. So the first one we have here is a multi-density midsole. And this website here says that typically if there's a different color of the midsole, that will usually indicate that there is a multi-density feature. The other one is looking at the medial post, seeing if there is plastic used to reinforce the medial post compared to something that just doesn't really 
have anything in the medial post. Um, a rigid heel counter, so these minimalist shoes don't have any real stability compared to another shoe that you know is ve quite rigid. And the other one is looking at an elevated um, medial insole, so seeing if the instep has a particular rise or if it's just completely flat. Looking at on the outside of the shoe, where there is a bit more of a tensioned um, medial upper, so if there is material that sort of reinforces that particular stability. And lastly, we're looking at the medial flare. So looking at the, the width of the heel housed in the shoe and looking at the width of the actual base of the shoe and seeing if there's uh, much difference if, or if it's particularly the same type of width from what's housed inside the shoe and the outer. So we rank these by seeing how many of these technologies are present in that shoe. If it doesn't have any of these technologies, you can rate that a five. If it has all of these technologies, you can rate that a zero. So if you've been following along with all the manual testing to do and the sub scores for each category, you just need to add them all up, all these sub scores, and then down the bottom, this particular chart says here, the sum of your sub scores, then you multiply that total sum by four and that will calculate your overall minimalist index percentage. So with me plugging in these numbers and just through the website following that particular criteria, these ASIC shoes came in at 20% on the minimalist scale and these Vivo barefoot shoes came in at 92%. So we've got 20 and we've got 92, so quite far away. And even without these calculators, it's good to know these particular characteristics and these particular features, just if you are shopping for shoes and if you're wanting something that's kind of close to what you've already adapted to. Because we know that if you have a drastic change in these particular features and it's a real different in disparity in terms of percentage on the minimalist index, you're gonna to have to spend a lot more time to transition into those shoes. So if you're just shopping around and you know what you've already adapted to, you can have a general feel of the weight, general feel of like the um, flexibility of the shoe, have a look at those certain features. Um, I will say though, I did chat to Matt Klein on the Run Smarter podcast, and he did mention when doing these certain flexibility tests, not to really wrench too much and be too aggressive with the twisting and the torsion because that can change its flexibility point and actually just uh, change how the, the natural movement or the natural bend of that shoe forms. So just be particularly careful when you're trying these at home, just give it a bit of a wiggle. Um, don't force it too much and don't do it too often either. Now, if you have decided to transition to something that's a little bit more barefoot and you're used to a traditional shoe that's around 50%. Like I said before, the greater that discrepancy, the higher the increased risk of injury because you're just transitioning to something that the body isn't used to. And so you will require a greater transition period. And to get into the real nitty gritty on the transition process and exactly how you should do that, I have made another video for you to check out. But before you do that, again, if you've liked anything or learned anything, hit like. And if you have any particular questions, leave it in the comments section and I'll be happy to reply.